Welcome back to the classroom. And class is in session. Hey guys, welcome back to the classroom. It's been a while and I'm looking forward to going through this really, really cool lecture with you on the top three ways to improve your memory. This is something that patients talk to me about at least a couple of times a week. Doc, my memory isn't as good. What can I use? What can I do? And so almost by popular demand, I bring this lecture to you guys. I, I try to distill it down to just three things because there are many, many things out there, many uh, tips, tools, information on how to improve your memory. Um, after a lot of thinking and looking at stuff, this is in my top three. So the first thing, um, and each of these are really important. And so I was going to say probably the most important one, but each one is equally important. So the first one is get better sleep. I can't stress this one enough because at least for me, when we're asleep, that little librarian in our mind comes out and catalogs and organizes all our memories and thoughts for the day. And so, you know, memories that were created in school, at work, at home, get catalogued so we can recall it, essentially. So getting better sleep is one of the things, one of, one of my top things for improving memory. I, I always tell people, and actually one of the things, one of the patterns that I see in my office, almost, almost 100% of people with poor memory, they don't sleep very well. And so check yourself and ask yourself, if, if you're having trouble with your memory, do I sleep well? Do I, do I wake up feeling rested in the morning? That to me is my metric of if I'm sleeping well or not. And so a, a, a perfect personal example of this was that when I was in university and uh, I was doing my pharmacology exam back in uh, pre-med and I was very nervous because I wasn't very good at pharmacology, but I studied very hard and it was one of my more weaker subjects. And it was my one and only all night before an exam because of how nervous I was. That was my only medical school C that I got for an exam because it, I didn't sleep well at all. I went to the exam, my mind was mush, and it just, it just wasn't a happy day for anyone. So sleeping is one of the best ways to improve memory. So to my students out there, to my, peop my adults who, um, who are my working people who require great brain power, sleeping is one of your best, best tools for improving your memory and recall ability. The second one is there's a there's a word called nootropics. Nootropics. N double O tropic. Nootropics. And these are a special type of supplement. There's a, there's a category of supplements designed specifically for improving memory. So the top three, like the ones that we commonly recommend, or at least I commonly recommend, the first one is ginkgo, ginkgo biloba, ginkgo. Yeah, so ginkgo is something that has been used for a long time. There's a fair bit of studies out there that suggest that ginkgo really helps with recollection and memory. The second one I recommend is, there's one called mukuna, Purines. Mukuna purines is, is also known as velvet bean or kowich, more colloquially. And this bean actually helps with dopamine production. So there's some studies out there that suggest that it's helpful in Parkinson's patients. But because it increases dopamine, which is an, a powerful neurotransmitter, it helps with our memory production as well, our memory, our memory and our recallability. Mukuna purines. And in addition to it being a super, super good nootropic, it also helps with our mood because dopamine is one of our feel-good neurotransmitters or hormones. And lastly, ginkgo, mukuna, and there's another one called brahmi, also better known as bakopa. So brahmi is the Ayurvedic name for it. Bakopa has been used for thousands of years in Ayurvedic medicine to help not just with memory, but with executive functioning. Essentially, our ability to make decisions and take a, a whole set of data, crunch it in our minds really quickly, and come up with a solution. 
So Bakupa, as it's known, or Brahmi, as it's known sort of Ayurvedically, these three supplements are really, really good as nootropics. Other, other, other common nootropics, so for instance, caffeine. Um, caffeine is actually a nootropic. Uh, simply because when we drink coffee, we, our mind is clearer and we think better. Uh, and very, in the same family as caffeine, nicotine. Caffeine, nicotine. So that, there are also nootropics as well. Although, obviously, we, we, we don't recommend this one because, you know, it's bad for you. Well, not, not, well, the smoking is bad for you, of course. So there are some supplements that we can take to improve our memory or recall ability. And finally, like I said before, everyone's important. But this one, I feel, is really, really important in today's era in today's age, in, as we speak right now, as you're looking at this video, this is really, really important. And it's more of a state of mind. I'm going to circle this one, and I'll put a little star on it. So, by show of hands, virtually, how many of us were doing something and someone else came and spoke to us and told us something. How many of us are on our phone looking at Instagram, looking at this video, doing something and uh, someone comes to say, hey, don't forget to pick up groceries. Hey, don't forget you have to go do this while we're on our phone. And uh, we're just sort of like, hey, yeah, yeah, no problem. And we go back to it. So we, we sort of weekly register what that person is saying and uh, we kind of forget it. And so... Or for instance, think of these students that's in class and uh, the teacher is talking and they're getting distracted with a pencil or they're chatting with their friends. From, from, so from kids to all the way up to adults, being present and focused is what allows us to form that memory. So for me at least, I, like when I was in university, I had, I had a, a sort of methodology for this. And this is more for academics, but it's just an example to show the, the presence. So what I would do is, if I had to learn like a piece of, a nugget of information, I would engage all my senses. So I would, I would listen during the lecture. I would write. I would write down that nugget of information. And then I would... I would look at the lecture slides, and finally, I would talk it out. So what I was doing was that same, that same, that same nugget of information was stored in four different parts of my brain, because there are parts of our brain that processes speech, vision, motor skills, verbal auditory. And so the thing is that one piece of info was stored in multiple places, redundant in my brain. So that, let's say for instance, I was having trouble recalling it. There was that one piece of information could have been sourced from many places that helped me to be able to remember things, even though med school was more than a decade ago, just being present and giving each piece of info its due respect. And so what also helped me with this in a big, big way was, was, and I'll write it down just because of how important it is. Meditation. Because meditation is us just being present in the moment and not thinking. So because we live in an age of distractions. Right now, we just flick through videos, flick through videos, looking at Instagram, scrolling, scrolling, consuming content at a a ridiculous rate. I remember when I was a child on the Sunday newspaper, we had the comic section and there was a Spider-Man comic and it was one panel long and Spider-Man would spend that entire panel just crossing the road. And I had to wait for next week to be able to see what he did on the other side of the road. And so we consume content at, at an alarming rate. And because of that, we are, t we are terribly and in a big, big way, we are very, very distracted. So this being present and would do wonders for our memory. 
So what I would like for each and every one of us who's looking at this video, check and see which one of these is lacking in our lives and in what way can we improve it and look at the results. Do it now, thank me later. So if there's any questions or concerns, you can shoot me a comment. And until then, I'll catch you guys in the next classroom. Take care.